where would one use color versus electrical? I, I, I'm in a very similar step on my path. Um, I've, as far as I know, I'm the only eye doctor in the islands who was a fellow in, in color therapy and syntonic optometry. Uh, and when I began doing that practice some 30 years ago, I, I began doing, found myself doing almost only that for a period of time for several years giving up the behavioral developmental work that, that inspired me through my, my dad's pioneer work in that field to get into the field. I was still doing nutritional work, but usually in different patients. Um, so vision therapy, went, for me, went through a phase of doing only work with light and color, primarily. And it was very effective. In fact, it was effective at things that the behavioral work wasn't, like cataracts and you know, glaucoma, eye diseases. Um, and I do very little of that now. And I'm doing the electronic work primarily. In my case, using it as a guide to natural medicines. Uh, but ultimately, I'm saying what I'm seeing in that is also that it's the frequency information that's the primary healer. That ultimately, the, the physical matter, uh, and, and uh, I don't want anybody to I interpret that I'm saying we don't need nutrition, we don't need food, we don't need magnesium when we're magnesium deficient, although we may be able to make it out of something else, but we don't have a level of knowledge of that yet to necessarily uh, fully encourage the biological transmutation systems, and we don't know that the environment uh, on Earth uh, at this time fully supports it as it might at other times, you know, like the idea that the age of, of that human beings can live to might change in different cosmological epics. Uh, so here's, here's where my take is, and is that the electron hits the body a lot harder than the photon does. And I think that the electron has a greater, I'm using this word, and I don't mean it in a bad sense, but disturbance than a, than a photon has. More mass to it, I guess. It's got more what? Mass. It's got mass. It's got yeah, an electrical field, which as it moves creates a magnetic field. The photon is much more subtle. Mm -hmm. I would put it that way rather. The electron can hit hard. You know, if you're doing a bee sting level, it's like you feel it hard. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, equivalent to uh, paddles for somebody whose heart is stopped. You hit them hard and it can shock the system back to health. So when Ray had a a, a, a centipede, centipede bite. bite on the back of her neck yeah. in bed one night, like we did the bee sting, and it was a big red nasty yeah. bite, yeah. and and did the bee sting Snow. setting on the skin hour on it, and and in an hour I was back to sleep. It was like the next morning, was it? It was like, well, where's the bite? She couldn't, we couldn't figure and out which. She had to try to remember which side it was on. And yeah. two weeks later, it showed up a little bit. It was yeah. itchy, and we treated it one more time. It's gone. It would normally take a month for that to. Mm -hmm. to clear. And certainly, you know, in that case, you have a, a protein toxin and you're denaturing it with an electrical, you're hitting it hard, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, the, the greatest beauty is, in most cases, we can hit it softly, gently, generally recognized as safe levels of electrons, which, again, are antioxidant by their nature. So, how wonderful. Oh, one of the things I, I thought I might uh, say earlier, I'll put in here, that when we go barefoot, in a natural environment, especially if there's some moisture like East Hawaii, or, or if we go to the ocean, even out in uh, wet grass, we connect with the Earth's field, and the Earth is, there's information now that, that the Earth is our number one source of, or at least a, a, a virtually infinite source of electrons for the body. So we're all, as a culture, riding around in cars that are electrically insulated from the ground by the tires and even the petrochemicals in, in the pavement, and then we're wearing shoes that have, you know, have rubber soles or synthetic soles. We're insulating ourselves from that natural source of antioxidant, not only protection, you know, we're thinking about it as protection, but it's, it's energy. It's our, literally, ener our energy function in the body comes from electrons in the mitochondria, which are bacteria that's symbiotic with our our, our human cell DNA, very different genetics. It comes from only our mother, not from mother and father. It's 
So we're multiple organisms to start with. We're a symbiotic collection. There's symbiotic fungi that, that uh, from other lines of research are supplying, likely supplying the, the, the shape, the, gene the genetics for the shape factors of our neurons and our blood vessels. Uh, that could be, you know, another whole line of discussion. And, and what I'm proposing is there's a need for a, I, I think of it as a university, but very different from the existing forms of university, but, but a, a place of higher learning, of research, of education, of, of practitioner training, more along the lines of classical uh, like medieval uh, university where, where the PhD was the doctor. Today's doctor, I have a doctorate, but it's, it's a practical, it's a, it's a professional doctorate, which is very different. It's, we go to school and we learn, here's how, here's how to think about it, here's what you should know and to start out with, you know, basic knowledge, and, and here's how to solve the problems, do a couple examples. You're not going there to learn how to solve new problems, you're going there to do what somebody else has already done, to repeat the same work. And, and there's this idea of standard of care that everybody should be doing the same thing, despite the fact that next year that standard will be different. And how does that standard change these days? It changes by corporate research, maybe government-sponsored corporate research. So we have, we have a, a deficiency of, of actually mental activity, of creative thinking, of creativity, of the art of healing. So I, I would like to see a place where we can fill in that tremendous void between the fields and start looking at the the, the holographic view, the holistic view, uh, not ignoring the physics, not ignoring the cosmology, which is electrical, in my view, uh, much more so than the the, the the view that we've been the blinders that we've put on since Einstein is that it's real complex if I try to think about the electronic part of the universe, so we'll just assume that that's only working at small scales, and the only thing working at great large scales is gravity. And now we have this divergence of modeling, which says at large scales we have, you know, we have this relativity Einsteinian view, but it doesn't makes sense. We can't figure out how it fits with the subatomic view, which is all electromagnetic, and they've kind of integrated the, the, the weak and the strong force and with electromagnetism, but still gravity doesn't make sense. And, and from a gravitational point of view in physics, well, we don't know how gravity works. We don't know what, the, what carries gravity. We don't, we don't really have a model for it. We just have a, an equation. Well, it's the same equation as you know, R squared, inverse R squared law, same as an electrical field. Uh, so I think there, there's, there's tremendous room for, for transcending those, those apparent you know, divergences. And you know, if we look at, at the cosmos, we'll even see, we'll see twisted pairs uh, of, of channels running through mm -hmm. cosmological space. Uh, that, that uh, plasma physicists are saying, well, those look like Birkeland currents from in a plasma, and they're looking at space saying, well, what's out there is the plasma. There's electrically charged particles. There's separation of the electrons by absorbing photon energy, separation from the, the nuclei, enough that you have positive and negative charges that can carry current, and when, they can't, when can't current moves, it sets up magnetic fields, so we have a, an electromagnetic universe, uh, and, and I think we're just, through that view, we're just beginning to see that, that that's probably going to explain a whole lot more about, about our history here uh, of life on the planet, why there's mass extinctions and changes in, in uh, planetary orbits, why there's, why there's this whole asteroid belt, well, was it a planet that exploded, but there, if there's, if there's, if there's uh, electrical discharges, plasma discharges, that go from the sun to the through the planets and the moon. It, it begins to explain so many. Uh, you know, the more data we get, the more it's it's like a developmental developmental model of of psychology, Cusatian psychology, 
where you know, the child develops a concept, a model of, it, of his or her universe, and, and then starts to collect observations that don't fit.